Hi, in this episode we're talking about why remote learning failed during COVID. As an educator, I've seen remote learning work well on many occasions. First, as a professor at the Air Force Academy, I developed several video series covering topics in math and physics that were very popular and effective with cadets. Later, as a homeschooling parent, we outsourced a number of our math and science and English courses to effective distance learning options, including a number of dual enrollment courses through the Georgia System for Online Coursework, the Alex online learning system, Derek Owens distance learning physics courses, and the Coursera online system. They all worked very well. In addition, I've mentored a number of successful science projects from a distance with little or no in-person work with a student. In many cases, with students I've never met in person. These science projects have won many awards and yielded tremendous student learning in addition to scholarly publications. Finally, my own children, now adults, did very well when their own college coursework at the University of Georgia shifted to remote learning. The experience of my own students with remote learning has been uniformly positive, showing that remote learning is not inherently flawed and it can indeed succeed. There is a Redeemer, Jesus, God's own Son, precious Lamb of God, Messiah, Holy One. So why is the remote learning that was implemented during COVID widely regarded as a failure? One, student accountability was woefully lacking. Student learning depends more on student effort than on teacher effort. Proverbs promises that all hard work brings a profit. And effective learning requires age-appropriate focus and effort by the students. Students will seldom work harder than needed to reach their desired outcomes in a class. Usually, it's a grade goal. In the first term of COVID remote learning, March through May 2020, many teachers were told by admins not to assign course grades any lower than the students had at the beginning of remote learning. These admins robbed most students of their motivation and also robbed the classroom instructors of their authority to provide effective needed feedback for lack of student effort. Asking teachers to teach effectively without being able to assign accurate grades is asking them to make bricks without straw. It is foolish. It is evil. It represents fraud against the accreditation system and against downstream stakeholders. When remote learning started back up for the fall 2020 semester, the big lesson students had learned in the prior term was that there is no real accountability for their lack of effort in the form of grades. Combined with the lack of effective discipline and the motivational challenges from poorly designed courses, there was never anywhere near the level of student effort required for effective student learning. Two, student discipline was lacking. In the normal brick and mortar classroom, teachers are accustomed and practiced in the required disciplinary methods to keep students on track. Effective remote learning requires parties at the remote locations to assist with this essential element. As homeschooling parents, we would put into place age-appropriate mechanisms and most of the online learning systems had mechanisms built in to assist with parental oversight. In college settings, honest grade accountability keeps students on task. When remotely mentoring science projects, it's a simple matter to stop working with students who are not showing proper discipline and effort on their end. 
But like a coach working with driven athletes, the prospects of success or failure in competition usually motivated adequate discipline. In the wholesale rush to remote learning in COVID, many parents rejected or abdicated this essential role and teachers were unable to build in the appropriate mechanisms necessary to remotely maintain the level of discipline required for effective learning. Three, coursework was poorly designed for remote learning. Teachers were simply not given adequate time or resources. This had to be the case in March 2020, but it was also widespread the following term. Admins were straddling the fence until late summer regarding whether the learning would be in person or remote when classes started back. A last minute shift to remote learning will seldom be successful. Yes, there were other challenges and contributors to failure, but addressing these three main issues is essential for remote learning to succeed in the, in the future. First of all, teachers need complete authority to assign course grades based on student mastery of the course material. There may be cases where the majority of students receive failing grades in courses. Since students are sometimes slow to believe, an administration has really returned this authority to the classroom instructors. Students prefer to play a game of chicken, thinking the teacher cannot fail us all, or they're talking tough, but they never hold to it when grades are issued. A return of academic integrity may not be convincing until it is proven through final course grades a time or two. Two, teachers need a much higher level of disciplinary authority both in brick and mortar classrooms and in remote settings. Students need to respect potential consequences from the teacher as much as athletes who aspire to be starters on their sports teams respect potential consequences from their coaches. Being in a classroom must be a privilege maintained by careful obedience to classroom rules rather than a right because viewing instruction as a right opens doors to lots of misbehavior. For remote learning to work, the necessary partnership with the adult parties at the remote learning site needs to be recognized and effective communication needs to be maintained. Parents need to own their role here and stop confusing the educational side with childcare. Admins need to provide teachers with adequate time and resources to design and develop effective coursework for remote learning. In most cases, effective remote learning coursework will look much different from the traditional brick and mortar classroom with a camera turned on. If these issues are addressed, remote learning can be very effective, especially once students reach their teen years and are capable of doing better work independently without constant attention and oversight. The good life is the land where the big grapes grow, milk and honey flow. From the morning till the night, everybody's singing to Jesus. Yeah, the good life is the land where the big grapes grow, milk and honey flow. From the morning till the night, everybody's singing to Jesus. Oh, I love Jesus. La, 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 la. Jesus.